shooting in progress. And I take it they don't mean filming. Oh, this is just getting silly. Don't go this way. I'm gonna come across some farmer with a shotgun soon. Going, what are you doing here? Oh! Can't possibly be going the right way. This is not good. Good morning from Newton Moor. It's about 10.50, uh, two and a half hours up the road from Glasgow. I was a bit slow moving this morning, I really wish I got going a little bit quicker because the forecast was for a sunny morning and then a bit cloudier later. I was going to park in the car park here for the Highland Folk Museum, but I'm concerned the gate's shut at 5.30 and since it's nearly 11, uh, I wasn't sure I was going to make it all the way to Carbridge and back. Carbridge is the target. It's 29, 30 miles each way, so about 60 miles round trip, so a decent run. I'm hoping for sunshine at first, according to the forecast, and then a bit more cloudy, but it should stay dry. There is weather coming in from the southwest, though. So, the penultimate stage of National Cycle Route 7, Lochs and Glens North, Strathspey, Newton Moor to Carbridge, around 60 miles round trip. Considering this is right in the heart of the Highlands, the route is pretty flat, keeping mainly about 40 metres either side of 250 metres. There is a choice of route in a couple of places just to provide some extra variety, one of which adds another 50 metres or so to the max height. The route is mainly on quietish roads with little cycle track and some off-road options. So we're starting at the Highland Folk Museum on the road north just out of Newton Moor, and we're quickly off that main road onto a nice tarmac cycle track for a mile or so into Gnusey where we take a right, crossing the railway at a level crossing, and then the River Spey before heading down past the Ruthven Barracks, then a slight climb up to a few miles of mainly elevated road with some really nice views over Strath Spey and the Mona Lea Hills beyond. And I paused there for a moment, it's probably bad Gaelic pronunciation, it sounds more like Mona Lisa. There's a wee dip down to Feshy Bridge at the 10 mile mark, a favourite spot with canyoners. Then more of the same, the road goes through a mix of woody cover, some more elevated views of Strath's Bay and the fine open farmland. At the 16 mile mark we reach Inverdrui and Rocky Murchas, where we have a choice of on-road on the east bank of the Spey or off-road to the west through Abbey Moor. The Abbey Moor direction is pretty rough, Sustrans call it variable surface, especially at the boat of Garten end. Taking the more scenic easterly route via Coilham Bridge takes us past Loch Pretiolish. And this is a Pictish name, my Pictish isn't great either. Then we take a left across to the west bank of the Spey into Boat of Garten at 23 miles. And this is where we start our climb towards Car Bridge. Around 120 metres climb if you take the off-road option, half of that if you take the road. Now a word about that option, at A95 there's a cycle track that avoids the worst of the road junction and then you're onto the road, the B9153, into Carbridge. It's pretty busy. So the alternative is to cross the A95 and go straight up the farm track and over the hill. And Street View this has a National Cycle Network 7 sign, but on this day, in early August 2016, it's gone. Could be it's not official route anymore, it has dropped off the online Sustrans map, aside from a floating yellow triangle. It's very rough in places and it's like deep sand also, you need a mountain bike or a fat bike to confidently tackle this with no walking. Best views of the day though, when you get to the top. Down the other side of the hill you have the option of continuing off road into Car Bridge or bailing out halfway onto the road about a mile short of the town. So, back to Newton Moor and we're just joining that track into King Usy. So this is what I hope will be the penultimate stage before reaching Inverness. Newton Moor to Carbridge and you can see we have a little path to join here. And that's where we parked. So yeah, I found a little lay-by there, just out of town. It's extremely smelly. It's obviously a favourite toilet stop. goes to 
through to, to Newsy. We take a right there past the Ruthland Barracks, Feshi Bridge, Coilham Bridge, and go through Abbey Moor or a right more along the line of the River Spey, uh, which looks a bit more picturesque. I might go one way and come back the other. This is quite a handy path. This wasn't obvious on the map, so it's a welcome bonus because the road there from Newton Moor to King UC is quite busy. But all good things must come to an end, so this is heading into King UC now, back in the road. But it should only be short before we get the right turn. So, there's a the seven sign. A little crossing. Uh, I did hear a train earlier. It's crossing the River Spey. Bay will be with us a lot of the way on this road. Ruthven Barracks. So a bit of a climb here, a small climb up from the barracks. You know, it's such a difference to see the trees and leaf uh, because I've usually done these runs between about March and May uh, when it's cooler and I just the way it's been I've had, had more time in the last couple of years. This is really nice. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. And there's still a few lorries that's although they're slow going. This is really nice. Really nice. This is Inch. And there's a Loch Inch. Just a little bit further along. down to Fashy Bridge. Oh, I'm doing a bit of canyoning here. That looks like good fun. There we go. Can we see that? It's uh, just coming up to 12 and just leaving Feshy Bridge and uh, took off a bit of time at Ruthman Barracks as well to get some pictures so we've been cycling about 40 minutes. Now there hasn't been hasn't been a mile post for ages so it'd be nice to get a count down say to Abbey Moor or Garton. There really hasn't been one at all. Hasn't been anything since can you see about 10 miles back. So this was a problem on the Dromochter section where you're going for miles and miles no real landmarks other than the mountains you could really have done with uh, a countdown to give you some confidence especially with all the, the warning signs about the, at the beginning about the 30k without any food or shelter so giving you some idea of how far you had to go would be nice
most of the traffic on this road is very courteous and slow but there are one or two fast ones and there's a big forestry vehicle a little bit of the way back that got a bit close so all the way along this road you have the Cairn Gorms over on the right here over to the east This is where Route 7 splits and we have the choice of going uh, through Avi Moor uh, or a slightly more scenic route down uh, by the Spey so we're going to take a right down by the Spey and it'll bring us out to the Garden So, yeah, the off-road route which is a bit shut in by trees as far as I can see from street view not as nice, I'm going to take the on road route and the time if we can see that, it's 20 past 12 the Rothy Murkus Visitor Centre so we've got a little bit of cycle track here before we join the main road can you see 14 so we're probably going about 16 miles Good boat of garden. Eat. Now it looks like the cycle track finishes just along here. Yep. Rejoin carriageway. Does look a bit busy this certainly. Oh well. Main road it is. for Nethy Bridge so it was Feshy Bridge and now it's Nethy Bridge Boat of Garden 7 yep, here we go maybe we'll see an osprey Ooh. nice big butterfly lovely open countryside very unhighlands like really Oh, fantastic smell. What is that? Oh, that really is a very nice aroma from something. This is the reason why I wanted to take this route rather than the route through having more. It's lovely. With the Cairn Gorms behind. Gorgeous, beautiful, lovely. All of the above. The sun's gone but it's not bad so the sun's been out more than I expected given the low cloud that was over a lot of the hills and it was only really after getting over to Mokhtar that the sun started to come out so no, it's been good so far Strathpey Steam Railway I think I just missed the train judging by the sound I heard as I came up the road and of course not far from here about two miles from here Loch Garten is where the ospreys are having had a coffee at the boat hotel uh, I'm just gonna have a banana banana and uh, head for Car Bridge it's not far now it's just a few miles three or four miles maybe so the boat hotel comes highly recommended so that's handy we have a sign four miles to Car Bridge so I think this is where we have the choice of route we can either go left and along the road or we can go over that hill 
So it's either via the B9153 or we head up that hill past that house and through the trees. It doesn't look like it's signposted anymore but when I street viewed it there is a seven sign up this road. Hmm. If it's not marked then I'm really I'm cheating. Well I'm not cheating. If it's not marked then I'm not doing seven. Ah come on. Carry on. Well, the tarmac stopped. This is signposted on the Sustrans map. It does have a big exclamation mark on it though, as a uh, rough surface, which it is. Still, it's no worse than through the Acre forest at Aberfoyle. No, it is worse. <sighs> it's like sand. I need those balloon tyres like that guy had at Blair Athol. It's a bit rough oh, and sticky. Oh, this is just getting silly. Don't go this way. The road must be better. Oh. Great view. I think I'm about to walk through a farmyard though. Definitely need to clean my shoes after this. Oh. Well, it's worth it for the view. That'd make a great a great photography subject. It's amazing even though we're at the start of August, second of August. Uh, there's still some snow there in the Cairn Gorms, so these are north facing slopes, so they don't get the sunshine and so they keep the snow and that's pretty much all year round if they've got it until now. Great view. It was well worth coming up here even if it was, uh, uh, the surface was not great. It looks like it might be downhill from now on. Let's go. I'm still going the right way. Oh, there's a deer. Look at the deer jumping. <laughs> okay, so we've come along this track. I thought it was going to be a no entry, but it looks okay. Shooting in progress. And I take it they don't mean filming. Oh well, I wonder if Bambi's going to get it. I'm beginning to wonder really if I took the wrong turn and this wasn't the alternative route. That'll be the road that uh, is the main Route 7 road, the road that's just out there with the traffic. And this is the plantation trail. Hmm. I don't have a mountain bike. I think I'll just go into the road. Car bridge? with the Pack Horse Bridge. Traffic's a bit fast on this road. So this is the car bridge. We've got signs and there's the Pack Horse Bridge. So, not today but for the next one, the final one to Inverness We've got a choice of Slocht, Slocht Summit on road or Slocht with the yellow uphill bike sign which is a bit more off-road so I might need to do some more research or get a different bike if I was going to take that one, let's say rough track but for today that's us reached our destination so I've reached Car Bridge at about uh 2.35, 25 to 3, can we see that? 25 to 3. Uh, it's starting to get a bit cloudy so I'll have a quick snack. 
but uh, as expected the forecast said it would get pretty dingy um, hopefully the rain will stay off but uh, I'm going to have to head back a bit quicker I've certainly taken my time getting here so that's about you know, three and a half to four hours so it's now five to three coming up to three and we're leaving Carbridge People are looking at me, talking to myself. Seven. This road's definitely a bit busy. There's a wee climb out of Car Bridge. Not as much of a climb as through the forest, of course, but still a climb. I think that's the top of the hill now. Looks like we're going down. Feels easier. Very busy though, busy road. Could really do with a cycle track near here on the route through the forest. It was really not suitable. This is where the view opens up over the Cairn Gorms again. I can still see the snow. Busy junction here, but we have a wee bit of cycle track just to take us off the junction. Could have done with that all the way along, really. Back at the junction, that's the way we went on the way to Cartbridge, up the hill there. Foot of garden, the Osprey village. Well, I haven't seen any Ospreys. Disappointed. No steam trains, no Ospreys. Have a more off-road route. Five miles. I should really have changed down again. Some worrying creaks from the bike. So this uh, definitely looks like the posh end of Boat of Garden. This will be where the movie stars live. This is the end of the road. Oh, seven goes this way, off road. Mountain bike time. Unfortunately, not mountain bike. Right. If it's all like this, it's going to be a pretty painful, what was it, eight miles to have you more? Oh, this really would need to be a mountain bike. <laughs> well, at least we've got a reassuring seven sign. Two and a half. Oh, not so bad. Is a well, I hope this is the right one. It just looked bigger. There's no sign. What's the worst that happens? Maybe I should bring a map sometime. That would be novel. Uh, well, I really am confused now. Try this way. I really want a seven sign. Wah! Wah! This is all very nice, but I really don't know if I'm still on the right road. It's the River Spey, I think. 
up with some real Speyside fishing. Give me a seven sign, please. I'm gonna come across some farmer with a shotgun soon. Going, what are you doing here? Oh! Are they telling me I've gone the wrong way? This is not good. This is really not good. That looks like a, a path. A golf course. Civilization. Alright, since that says 4T, I'm going to go this way and I think it'll be the road. Ah. Look at I see. A seven. So, that way. Well, I suppose it wasn't a million miles off it, but I'm being spoiled now. There's a sign every 10 yards. <sighs> Have you more? Civilization. We'll just pop up to the centre for a minute. I'll be more at about 10 past four and it's starting to rain. Glasgow 174, fortunately I'm not going there. Can you see 15? Add two for Newton Moore. Back to where the road joins with the on road route, which is what we took earlier on today while the sun was shining. Okay. So, this is us back at the split. Let's go 14 to Can you say? 16 to Newton Moore. I didn't realise it on the way up, but just come over a what seemed like a sizable long hill. We're now on the way down, so uh, obviously getting tired. Super views. Didn't notice this in the way up, of course, because. I was coming the opposite direction, that's why it's always good to go both directions. Back across the spay, taking it easy. Uh, really don't like level crossings. Coming up to 10 to 6, so just under 7 hours. Uh, unfortunately, my GPS, uh, I had the phone restart at Aviemore, so yeah, I don't know if it's lost it, but it hasn't been running since Aviemore, so I'm guessing about an hour to an hour and a half of stops. Uh, about 60 miles. Uh, pretty good, apart from getting lost in that fuel, so back to the car for a coffee. 